Well, good morning, everyone. I want to welcome you to Jim's In Town Gardens and Bellows Legacy Rabbitry, and also the JNL Ministries YouTube channel. So today, January 17th, 2022, this is Words of Wisdom for today. Um, cold here, uh, 14 degrees. Supposed to get up near 40, but they're calling for 9 to 13 inches of snow for us today. And it just started snowing about a half hour ago. Ah. So two scriptures I want to look at today. The first one is found in Exodus. Exodus chapter 14, verse 25. And took off the chariot wheels, and they drave, the, uh, and they drave them heavily. So that the Egyptians say, said, let us flee from the face of Israel. For the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. The other one I want to look at is Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his, of his power. When he had when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Have any of you ever had a wheel come off while you were driving down the road? You know, I've had some flat tires, not a lot, but I've never had a wheel fall off while I was driving down the road. Now, I have had it happen on farm equipment, you know, in a field, but not on the road. And, you know, I, I remember from, oh, I was probably six or seven years old. Uh, maybe not quite that young, but I was a young boy. And I remembered hearing and learning about how wheels were developed and the importance of the wheel. You know, and, and a wheel is, it's a useful tool, right? So many ways. Wheels can be so handy. And you know, today in this verse, I think it's the first time that it was ever mentioned in the Bible. And we can see where Exodus 14 records the miraculous deliverance of the Israelites as they walked across the Red Sea. Yeah, they're walking on dry land because God had parted the waters. And as they got away from Egypt, got away from the Egyptians who were chasing after them, here Pharaoh had 600 of the best chariots, best chariots of, of Egypt, his officers, and all of them that were with them. You know, I wonder, you know, they probably had the best mechanics on those wheels. I'm sure those wheels on those chariots were serviced, whatever they had to do. But I mean, these Israelites, they witnessed a mighty miracle. And we can see that uh, the scripture says that they're, Hearts were hardened. <laughs> it's amazing. God made the wheels of their chari chariots come off. And I think this is a perfect example of God's divine interve uh, intervention over dealing with, with men. As I said, I'm sure the finest mechanics in Egypt had worked on those chariots. I'm sure Pharaoh had the very best. And these mechanics would have been, I'm sure, highly skilled using the latest tools that they had back then. But when God has what he plans done, you know, no human intervention no matter what your mechanical skills are, is going to stop it. Amen? You know, and here they say, let's get away from the Israelites. 
The Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. You know, the Egyptians recognized that the Lord was fighting for his people against his enemies or their enemies. You know, think about this. When you when you read the book of Exodus, they had already witnessed God's miraculous power. Remember during the 10 plagues? So why did they think that God was going to turn his back on Israelites at this time? And you know, there's so many scriptures in the Bible that show us that God is watching over all his creations. He is. He is. Sustaining all things by his powerful word. And think about this, friends. He's got every hair on our head counted. We can see in scripture that not a single bird falls without his knowledge. You see, he watches over all his, his creation. Ordering them and all their actions for his own glory. You know, the divine intervention of God can be a terrifying thing for some people. It can also be a tremendous comfort. But you see, it depends on where you are in Christ. As believers, we can rest in the calm assurance that God rules for our, our ultimate good. So today, I hope those who are hearing this that you find peace, you find assurance in God's word. Heavenly Father, we come to you, Lord, and we thank you for your truths. Thank you that we have scripture that we can trust in, we can believe in, showing how good you are however you are a just god father i pray for those who are hearing this word today i pray that they know you i pray that they know your son jesus we see in the world we can go on in newspapers we can go on listen to the radio tv we hear of all the stuff that's going on but lord we can trust in your truths too when we find christ and we accept christ and we repent of our sins and we live a life that's in obedience to him that we have your hand protecting us thank you lord we praise you in Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, this morning I was kind of looking at some of the reports of what had happened in the, the Carolinas and Georgia and even places in New York with this powerful storm coming up through. And, you know, you look at some of the damage that it did. Tornadoes down in, in, in Florida from the storm, Izzy. And, you know, you could get afraid. Oh, what's going to happen here in Maine? But you know what? I trust in the Lord. Now, does that mean I don't have to worry about some of my buildings and Try to pull some of the snow before the heavy rains come with it and the winds. No, I need to do that, but I'm not afraid. But that goes with anything in our life. You know, you have those fear mongers who tell about all the, the stuff that's going to happen in the end times. And actually, you can read the Bible and hear some of the things that are going to happen in the end times, but 
Does that make me fearful? No, because I cling to God's promises. Hope this might help somebody. Friends, we love you. Hope you have a blessed day today.